Hey, this is Katie again at Kentucky Hemp Works. Uh, we are here for our fourth day of hemp homeschool. Very excited to be back in the greenhouse. Today it's not raining so much, so hopefully you can hear me just fine. Um, it's nice and warm and the sun is coming out, so it's a perfect day for our homework today, so I'm excited to get to that. Um, so moving into this very quickly, we talked about the roots first, then we talked about the stalks. Now I would like to talk a little bit about um, the flowers, or I would say the leaves of the plant, and um, how seeds are actually produced. So a cannabis plant is going to have males and female plants. And um, there are things that you can do to make sure that you only have females. Um, but for the most part, if you just have a hemp plant in its natural form and you're growing from seed, you're going to have males and females. Um, so all of the plants in here are females. I might get rained on, and if that happens, this is rain or shine. So we will just keep going. Um, so these particular plants are females, but let's just say uh, we use our imagination and let's pretend that this plant is out in the field and that it's going to collect pollen from some of the male plants. Now, some of the seed crops will actually, some of them are hermaphrodites, so they have the male and the female parts of the plant, and they're self-pollinating. But let's just pretend, for the sake of argument, that we're talking about a male plant and a female plant. So on this female plant, if you look really closely at the leaves, and I talked about these a little bit before, but and I don't know if you can see it, but you, you will if you... Uh, Google any any uh, cannabis plants or, or some of that, you can actually find these little spikes that are sticking out at every branch. So every time you have a branch, you've got these set of little spikes. Those are the female part of the re reproductive process. And those little things, they stick out, and they're going to attempt to just catch some pollen. So um, every time you have one of those spikes, when the plant matures and starts to actually produce flowers, it'll form a bud, and that bud will produce a sticky resin. That sticky resin is actually what catches the pollen in the air. So when you have your plants out in the field, you've got your male plants, and they shoot up really early. Um, they start producing pollen really early. And you can actually see them from a distance. It's so obvious what the male plants are because they have these tiny little uh, yellow balls on them that are uh, pollen sacs. You can shake them and you'll actually see little puffs of pollen just puffing right off of that plant. Hemp is very productive. It is producing tons of pollen. When those females catch a little bit of pollen in the air and they actually get fertilized, that's when they start to produce a bunch of seeds. So every little branch that you have is gonna have um, a bud on it. That bud is gonna catch that pollen, and then once it gets pollinated, that bud is gonna become a seed head and start producing a bunch of seeds. Um, another name for those seed heads are cola, which I believe is a Spanish word for tail. Um, because when you look at them, like on a, on a seed plant, it does kind of look like a, a big thick tail. So, um, but we like to call them seed heads because we produce lots of seeds here. And uh, seeds are kind of what makes the world go round for us. So, um, so we call them seed heads just like with other plants when you're talking about other plants as well. Um, <clears throat> so some of the different things that you're going to do with these, um, if you've got... A, uh, just female plants and you are growing them for CBD, um, that's going to be a completely separate situation than if you are growing seed crops for seed. So with the CBD plants, you don't want them to get pollinated at all. You want them to continue to produce those buds. But with the seed crop, you want them to get pollinated. So we love our male plants in a seed crop and we hope that they spread their pollen everywhere. Um, so, if you're not if you're not going for seed, there are a lot of other things that you can still do with your plants, um, including making salad with the leaves. You can actually make tea with these leaves. Um, you can grow the plants as microgreens. 
It's raining in the greenhouse. It's cool. It's cool. I'm not made out of sugar. Um, but yeah, you can <laughs> you can make tea from the leaves. You can make a salad. You can feed them to animals as fodder. So there's a lot of things you can do with the plants, even if you're not growing them specifically for seed. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up. Definitely getting soaked here. Um, homework for today. We have um, some math homework. I know everybody uh, loves math, but uh, our math homework is a little bit of, you know, we're, we're thinking about sort of pragmatically, you know, if you're interested in growing hemp, how are you going to figure out how many seeds to plant per acre, how many clones to plant per acre, etc., etc. So they're fairly straightforward math problems. We've got that worksheet there. Um, the second homework assignment is uh, actually really designed to get everybody to go outside. Hopefully it's not raining outside, like it's raining inside here right now on me. Um, but right now it is sunny outside. It stopped raining just a few minutes ago. Um, so what I'm hoping is that everybody will have a chance to go outside and work on their, um, work on their foraging homework. So what I've got for you, you know, I talked about making salad or making tea from the leaves. Since technically in Kentucky, you're not allowed to take these kinds of leaves and make salad with them because you do have to have a permit um, to either grow or possess them or produce, uh, process them. Um, but there are some things that anybody can go out and find just about any time uh, once springtime comes. So um, we've got uh, two different links there. One is about foraging for dandelions and one is about foraging for plantain. Both of these common plants are considered weeds in our, in our society. Um, plantain and dandelion have so many uses. They are so good for us. You can eat the whole plant, um, dandelion flowers, dandelion leaves. In the fall, you can actually dig up the roots and boil the roots for tea. Um, we like to go out and just pick dandelion heads and just eat those flowers. Um, make sure you blow the ants off first because ants love them too. But, um, but go for a nature walk. Go outside. Enjoy some fresh air. I hope it's sunny where you are. If not, we've got some sun. Hopefully it'll be moving your way soon. Um, but get outside, find some dandelions, harvest, harvest the leaves, bring them home, and make a salad with them. Grab some plantain leaves, get those nice, fresh, young leaves that are popping up, um, and make a salad with them. Dandelion and plantain salad. And if you do it, send us a picture. I would love to see your dandelion salads. They really come out beautifully. Um, and uh, don't forget, if you have any questions about any of these things, just drop them in the comments. I'll answer the questions below, or I'll answer the questions during the next lesson, um, or we'll find a lesson that, that fits with your questions. So if you have any questions, let us know. Get on that math homework. We know you love math. And, um, and then get outside. Go find some dandelions and some plantain. Take some pictures. Make a salad. Enjoy your salad. Enjoy all your beautiful vitamins. And, uh, and then send us a picture, let us know. Thanks, see you tomorrow.